Can you believe a three-time NBA champion and two-time league MVP, including the only unanimous MVP awarded in league history, is somehow still underrated? Well, that's where Stephen Curry currently finds himself at. Calling him the best shooter ever is no longer that big of a compliment, as it's time we start calling him one of the best players ever. Join us now as we take a look at how good Stephen Curry really is. After talking about the league's greatest shooters ever on a recent interview, Ray Allen was asked if he was ever trying to say that he thought Reggie Miller and not Steph Curry was the greatest shooter ever. The all-time leader in threes responded by saying, Yes, Reggie is because of the way he set up the game, the way he played the game. Obviously, I incorporated a lot of who he is into how I played. He was the standard bearer. Without him, we don't have a formula for moving forward. So that's how I view it, because it allowed me to do the things that I was capable of doing. Everybody is obviously entitled to their own opinion, but at this point, it's blatantly disrespectful for anybody to say Curry isn't the GOAT shooter, because clearly showing a biased opinion as he was talking more about the impact Miller had on him as a player, what Allen was trying to say is Curry was on a different group. That he isn't just a shooter, but more of a ball handler and a playmaker, unlike Klay Thompson or legends like Miller and himself. But Curry doesn't need to be primarily a three-point shooter to be considered a GOAT shooter. Still, Allen is an example that there's still people who don't consider him as such. So in case there's any doubt, Steph's a career 43.3% shooter from behind the three-point line on 8.4 attempts per game. These numbers obviously don't show the crazy difficulty of many of his shots, but nobody has a better combination of accuracy, volume, and shot difficulty as Curry has. So let's hope if you still thought he wasn't the GOAT shooter, this makes it clear. And when you think about it, Curry being the best shooter ever is even more impressive considering how good he is as a playmaker, ball handler, and inside scorer. This is exactly what I mean when I say it's even a little bit disrespectful to use the best shooter ever tag as a shield to avoid saying Curry is one of the best ever. For starters, there have only been a handful of players in NBA history to win multi-time league MVPs, 14 to be exact. And as we said already, Curry is the only player to ever win it by unanimous decision. There are only so many players that have won NBA titles, and Curry has three. And before you go type something crazy into the comments section, no, him not having a finals MVP is not a valid argument to discredit him as one of the best players ever. The Warriors wouldn't have made five straight trips to the finals if it weren't for Curry, so him not having a finals MVP is irrelevant. And the funniest part is that he has a really good chance of winning one more NBA title in the near future once Klay Thompson returns from injury. And if the Warriors do win one more championship, you can bet Curry will be the finals MVP this time around. There's also an intangible historical value Steph can claim, and that's changing the way the NBA looked at three-pointers. Saying he single-handedly revolutionized the game may be a bit of an exaggeration, as the three-point revolution was something that would inevitably happen with analytics taking over decision-making in NBA front offices and game planning. But what we know for sure is Curry heavily accelerated the evolution of basketball. Thanks to his otherworldly shooting skills, he's made it okay for players to pull up for threes on the fast break. He's made it okay for players to shoot off balance threes coming off screens. Up to 10 or 15 years ago, doing any of these would immediately get you benched by your coach. But Curry helped change the perspective and the way we look at our game. So he really deserves a lot of credit for historically impacting basketball. One more invaluable intangible he possesses, which can actually be backed up by stats if they're looked at properly, is how impactful he is just by being on the court. Curry draws so much attention on the offensive end that even when he doesn't have the ball in his hands, everybody's looking at him. Just watch a couple of minutes of the next Warriors game. It's hilarious to watch players chasing Steph all around the court when he doesn't even have the ball. It's madness. His gravity's unmatched, and it allows the Warriors to open up so much space for other players to either take wide open threes or take advantage of empty lanes for easy layups and dunks. But of course, Curry isn't just happy with running around and letting everybody else run the show. He's the guy that runs the show. And that's been made as clear as ever during this 2020-21 regular season. Many people thought Curry's number would take a slight hit this year, considering one half of the Warriors roster is literally a bunch of G League players, and that Klay Thompson wouldn't return until next season. But the total opposite has happened, and Curry once again finds himself in the MVP race. So, let's go ahead and take a deep look at the historically great season Curry's having this year. But before we do, let us know in the comments down below whether you think Steph can win his third league MVP award this year. This year, Curry's averaging 30 points, 5.4 rebounds, and 6.2 assists on 48.6 shooting from the field and 42.3% from the three-point arc. 
The shooting splits, particularly his three-point percentage, took a huge hit early on while Curry struggled to get going. But he's more than figured it out by this point. He shot 52.1% from the field and 46.8% from three the month before he missed his first game of the season against the Charlotte Hornets due to stomach sickness. So we wouldn't be too surprised if Curry finishes the year with the second 30 points per game, 50-40-90 season in his career, as he'd also become the only player ever with two such campaigns in NBA history. Steph is scoring an absurd 1.34 points per shot attempt this year, which is the best mark among all NBA point guards, and a top 8 mark in the entire NBA among qualifying players with at least 400 minutes played. Most of those players ahead of him are big men, and none of them take nearly as many shots as Curry does, not to mention shots as difficult as Curry's. His equally unbelievable 61.5% effective field goal percentage is also the best among point guards. This guy's not only a walking bucket, but a walking mega efficient bucket. His shot chart is unbelievable. Other than outlier cold spots in the corners, from which Curry is shooting just 8 for 28 this year, every other spot is bright red. Per cleaning the glass, he's shooting 45% on non-corner threes and 53% on mid-range shots. And while Curry's accuracy at the rim is currently slightly below where it was over the last couple of seasons, he's still top 5 among point guards at 63% accuracy. But sure, he's just a shooter. Perhaps the most impressive part about his crazy good season is how Curry's doing it without Klay Thompson or even Kevin Durant around him. All of those people who claimed Curry was just a system player that was lucky to have teamed up with other good players have no argument anymore. Also, the Warriors no longer have all of those cheap yet so well-fitting veteran role players that were a part of their championship winning rosters. Instead, he's surrounded by a bunch of green and inexperienced players who are trying to do the best they can. If you rank the Warriors players by minutes played, spots 1 through 4 are predictably occupied. Curry, Draymond Green, Kelly Oubre, and Andrew Wiggins. But if you add up the years of NBA experience from players ranked 5th through 11, you get the grand result of 16. Let us repeat that. The Warriors' 7 main supporting cast players have a total 16 years of NBA experience combined, 8 of which belong to veteran Kent Bazemore alone. We weren't kidding when they said their rosters filled with recently graduated G League players. Therefore, it shouldn't come as a surprise that the Warriors are an absolute disaster when Curry's sitting on the bench. They've always taken a hit when he subs out. But the presence of aforementioned offensive threats like KD and Clay allowed Steve Kerr to be creative. Right now, when Steph sits, Golden State has three scoring options. Draymond Green, who's shooting a career-low 35.9% from the field, giving the ball to one of the G League players, and Kelly Oubre or Andrew Wiggins, both of whom have posted solid numbers but aren't nearly as good when Curry's gravity doesn't open up as much space for them. A great example of the type of stuff that happens when baby-faced assassin isn't there to save the day is Golden State's recent meltdown loss to the Charlotte Hornets, which was Curry's only missed game of the season. The Warriors fought really hard and actually found themselves with a 5-point lead and only 1 minute and a half remaining on the clock. They proceeded to allow Terry Rozier to score 11 points in that last minute plus of the game, with two of those 11 points coming after Draymond Green got himself ejected when he picked up two dumb technical fouls. The Warriors were up by two at that point, and those two technical free throws allowed Rozier to tie the game. He then drained a buzzer beater over Juan Toscano Anderson that completed the comeback. It was one of the most disappointing and embarrassing losses in the Steve Kerr era and one that highlighted just how much Golden State depends on Curry to perform at an A level every game. And what do you think he did when he returned to the lineup the following game? Curry dropped 37 points and 7 threes on the helpless New York Knicks. You couldn't script it any better if the NBA were a TV series. Overall, the Warriors are 17.7 points per 100 possessions worse when Steph isn't on the court. This mark is, you guessed it, the highest in the entire NBA. It literally means no other team becomes worse when one player subs out than the Warriors do when Curry sits. Oh, and it also means the Warriors essentially turn into the Timberwolves when Curry isn't playing. Jokes aside, Steph Curry's impact is undeniable. He's an MVP caliber player, still playing at a historically good level at 33 years old, and with a not-so-good team. Not to mention, he changed the game of basketball. Everybody knows that he's a very good player, but most people still ignore how truly great he is. We're talking all-time great right here. When asked if he thought he was in the conversation for this season's league MVP a couple of weeks ago, Curry had a simple response. Game speaks for itself. And it really does. He still faces an uphill battle if he wants to win, as the Warriors don't have that good of a record, something that's heavily considered when voting for the MVP award. And there are also other star players who are putting up really good numbers as well. 
Whether he wins it or not, Stephen Curry's status as an all-time great is already cemented. So please, let's stop using best shooter ever to talk about his greatness, and instead use something like top 20 player ever. He's proven to be good enough and still has a lot left in the tank. Where do you rank Stephen Curry in your all-time list? Will he win another NBA championship before he retires? Let us know what you think in the comments down below. And as always, don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel.